And uh, so we have the next um, speaker in this panel, um, Pan Lu. Um, so Pan Lu is a long time friend of mine. Um, we actually met each other 10 years or 11 years ago in a, a co conference in Shanghai, and we were both graduate students, um, kind of um, you know exchanging notes and comments um, uh, in the audience. And uh, just a few years, we lost contact, and a few years ago, we just ran into each other um, at Art Basel Hong Kong, uh, where Pan Liu was uh, filming, uh, making her film on um, also another interesting global contemporary art connectivity, uh, which has been complete. So yeah, so Pan Liu now is a professor, uh, assistant professor at, um, um, uh, sorry, your resume is too long. Um, Pan Li received her PhD in contemporary literature from the University of Hong Kong. She did her research as a visiting fellow at a technical university in Berlin, Harvard Yenching Institute, uh, Fukuoka uh, Asian Museum, and Taipei National University of Arts. She teaches in uh, Chinese culture as assistant professor at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. She's the author of two monographs, Invisible uh, Panlifacets, uh, Memory, Space, and Modernity in Berlin and Shanghai, and uh, Aestheticizing Public Space, Street Visual Politics in Eastern Asian um, uh, cities. Her film, uh, Miasma, Plants and Export Painting, uh, received award for excellence from Image Forum uh, Festival in Japan. Um, her recent film, uh, Many Undulating Things, was selected for the Burning Lights International Film Festival in Switzerland. So let's welcome um, Dr. Pan Lu. Thank you. Thank you, Mia and Nikita. Um, for inviting me to this symposium, very exciting, uh, in one of my favorite city, <laughs> Berlin. Okay, um, so today I will um, um, talk about um, thank you um, the tour of the Orient, uh, Casa Pacific, the airline's contemporary art uh, in Asia exhibition in 1965. On April 22, 1965, Hong Kong-based airline Cathay Pacific, uh, later I will call CP, launched its multi-city um, tour exhibition entitled Contemporary Art in Asia in Singapore. The show then toured Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok, Jesuiton, uh, Manila, Tokyo, Osaka, Fukuoka, and Taipei before finally returning to Hong Kong. Well, according to the original plan, uh, 14 principal cities of Asia were included in the tour, starting with approximately 90 paintings, with 15 from Japan, 30 from the Philippines, 17 from Taiwan, 12 from Hong Kong, 12, uh, 21 from Singapore, and 15 from Malaysia. The number of artworks grew as new works from artists of different cities were added to the exhibition throughout the tour. The result of the show's final competition revealed a certain composition of Asian art at that time. In September um, 1965, three top winners of the entire show were selected. Um, so this is one of the uh, winning uh, work, Mr. Uh, Satyan Gosa of Calcutta of, uh, for his oil painting, A Shop Window and Ms. Trungja of Taipei for his scroll painting, A Trace of Time. I cannot find an image, so I um, just use some of the other image. And Mr. Sanon Siribon of Bangkok for his painting, Fishing Village. Very limited information actually is available on the image and the detailed uh, descriptions of these artworks on the show. Neither was there much information on the participating artists in, in, in the exhibition. I don't even have the full list of uh, participating artists. Except for three uh, grand prize winners, some fragmented information on these uh, artworks can be pieced together to provide only an incomplete picture of the artistic content of this exhibition. Moreover, the exhibition can also be uh, considered no more than a promotion of CP's flight network around Asia and thus might carry limited significance in art history. 
Nevertheless, uh, this research um, situates this exhibition in a broad historical context and builds an intriguing picture of how this art show constructs, constructs and reveals the imaginations of modernity and in and off Asia during the 60s. A touring art exhibition sponsored by Hong Kong's earliest and biggest civil aviation service, service apolitical as it may appear, unavoidably carries profound implications and reviews in unexpected places the ways of political, cultural, and social formations in the 60s Hong Kong and Asia. We're taking as the starting point uh, three uh, aspects of the CP uh, exhibition, namely the tour destinations, uh, that's the contest, and the participating Hong Kong artists artistic and exhibition practices, the content, and also the reports of the show in uh, the airline's travel magazine or its representations three parts. I suggest the alternative ways of imagining Asia in the 60s by adopting a Hong Kong perspective. I contend that the idea of Asia in this show was from the eye of Hong Kong, imagined through an inter-Asia cosmopolitanism where both self and de-orientalization can be traced. Now the first part. Well, compared with many other ways of defining Asia through cultural events in the Cold War period, the CP exhibition seemed to stand between those that were sp supported directly by the US information services and those that sided with the communist movement or the, the NAM, the, the Bandung Conference. Sponsored by a commercial flight uh, carrier, the show, um, um, the show's major concern with Asian art was their market value. Neither the Asian art nor Asia in the CP exhibition was explicitly political, but this exhibition's apolitical politicalness was implied in the tour's destinations. While the post-war uh, era can be characterized mainly as the era of uh, na uh, nation, uh, nation states, which can be well exemplified by the establishment of the United Nations and the emergence of numerous new Asian countries that declared independence from their former colonizers um, and occupiers, Hong Kong remained a city-state, a colonial port without a nation. Consequently, the connecting entities of Asia from Hong Kong's perspective were also understandably based on cities rather than nation states. Arguably, the city status of Hong Kong accounts for its rapid economic growth that was based on a unique paradigm of development distinctive from that of other Asian countries. The development model of Hong Kong did not rely on strong state-led industrialization. By, 90, uh, by late 1960s, Hong Kong as a city-state flourished with numerous, um, with numerous uh, small to middle-sized priv private enterprises, for example, the closing electronics and plastic sectors. This feature of Hong Kong, however, is, political and, uh, is econom economic and political. Hong Kong's free market economy served as a strong symbol for the ideological freedom uh, and um, its success that can be set in a sharp contrast with that of the highly state orchestra planned economy in mainland China, just one narrow river away from Hong Kong. I, I borrowed this image from the AA's website <laughs> um, to, to see uh, from the Hong Kong side, China. Um, so the absence of nation, um, although I think by no means of nationalism, created a flexible, I quote, space of negotiation, facilitation, and experimental creativity in Hong Kong. Moreover, the national economic political discourse of Hong Kong must be examined in cultural terms. One prominent example of this cultural network is the film industry. Major uh, Mandarin Chinese film producers in Hong Kong, for example, the Shaw Brothers Studio, which moved from Shanghai to Hong Kong in 1957, and Cathay Organization, uh, which moved uh, its headquarters from Singapore to Hong Kong in 1953, dominated the entertainment industries in Southeast Asia in the 50s and 60s. The Hong Kong-centered Nanyang, or South Ocean, right, um, film um, market networks embodied well the making of a collective sense of culture and a moral identity, taste, and ideological scheme. 
And the reports uh, on the um, CP Art uh, exhibition in South China Morning Post, Hong Kong was simply included in the region uh, Southeast Asia. The film market overlapped the cities or flight destinations, uh, as in the present case um, in the CP show, rather than nations, were nodal points used by CP and Hong Kong to map Asia. So these cities, including Kurampo, Singapore, Bangkok, Jesuiton, and Saikon that were planned to be included in the tour exhibition were obviously business centers uh, of overseas Chinese. Last but not least, in 1965, the US uh, was the leading imperial power in the region, previously serving as trading ports in Asia and the maneuver of British Empire. The cities including, uh, included in the exhibition tour list were closely related to the presence of U.S. in Asia and its military actions in the Vietnam, Vietnam War. After the breakout of the Vietnam War, Hong Kong played an additional role for the U.S. as a place of arrest and uh, recuperation and the R&R centers for American military forces stayed, uh, stationed in Vietnam to take a break from their usual duties. R&R spots for U.S. troops were located all over East and Southeast Asia, including Bangkok, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Manila, Seoul, Singapore, Taipei, and Tokyo, um, and uh, of course, Hong Kong. Um, so, uh, well, incidentally, this list again almost overlaps with the entire list of the countries or cities included in the CP exhibition destinations. So this network is city-based and it has its origin from the overseas Chinese, the British, and also the US inference. And then I move on to talk about the content of the show. Notwithstanding of the outer geopolitical context of the exhibition, the inner side of the show nurtures a circle of artistic articulation of Asia and its modernism in post-war years. Around the time of the CP show, uh, a trend that started in the late 50s of reinventing Chinese ink art, ink art uh, techniques and uh, concepts began to take root in both Hong Kong and Taiwan. Chuang Zhe from Taiwan, one of the grand prize winners of the CP show, was um, famous for his abstract ink painting that blended the brush painting and calligraphy traditions of China with abstract expressionism. Although we would, could not find an image of Chang's award-winning work, uh, A Trace of Time, we may deduce from the style of uh, artworks of um, the Fifth Moon um, group, Yue Hua Hui, where Chang served as a member since uh, its inception, that his entry adopted uh, an experimental style. In their paintings, we see them using uh, calligraphic skills in uh, turning the Chinese ink paintings um, um, tradition that featured a, a mediated static landscape of the metaphysics to an articulated outburst of emotion, which, um, for example, Liu Guosong, uh, another uh, important member of the Fifth, Fifth Moon Society, described as the characteristic of Western art. At the same time, um, contemporary art groups with a similar artistic bent also emerged in Hong Kong. Um, Lu Shouquan uh, was recognized as the pioneer of new ink painting movement in Hong Kong in the 60s. In, uh, in the 60s. And influenced by Lu um, um, and benefiting from his own studies in the US between 1961 and 1965, uh, Wu Zizhuang or Wang Wuxie uh, theorized the new ink painting in the context of Hong Kong in the 1960s. In the 66 article uh, uh, he wrote called The Departure from the East After Returning, uh, Hui Dao Dongfang Zai Chu Fa, um, Wang tried to conceptualize the Eastern identity through, I uh, quote, a root searching process that brought him back to the origins of Chinese art so that he could um, re comprehend, uh, re practice, and recreate it with greater freedom beyond the boundary between the East and the West. I think this researching process has to be examined in a Cold War contest in the region. In, the co um, in that period, new Confucianism in Hong Kong thrived with the efforts of Confucianist intellectuals such as Qian Mu and Tang Junyi, who fled to Hong Kong after the communist takeover of mainland China in 1949. 
At present, Hong Kong and other overseas Chinese community, ironically, present a more authentic yet more modern uh, cultural China in two-way Ming's term. Hong Kong was undoubtedly in the center of this Chinese globalization and spoke for the notion of Chineseness in Asia. Meanwhile, Chinese paintings, uh, painters in mainland were also preoccupied uh, with um, um, another kind of modernization of ink painting, namely the new national painting movement that often features landscape paintings depicting infrastructural achievements of the new China. Thus, redefining Chinese art and in turn possibly uh, Asian art in an individualized counter-realism, in particular that defined in the socialist terms and the relatively westernized way was a particular acute matter for the, this diasporic Chinese artists. The abstract turn in Chinese painting in Taiwan and Hong Kong therefore can also be read as a political choice. So the younger generation of Hong Kong artists continued Lu and uh, Wang's quest for what uh, uh, Hong Kong scholar Man Ki Hua called a third space between the East and West. Among the 15 Hong Kong artists who participated in the CP show, five of them, namely Gilbert Pan, uh, Ho Chi Fan, Van Lao, uh, Zhuan Yi, and Jackson Yu, were members of uh, the Circle Group. Um, founded in 1964, the Circle Group was one of uh, Hong Kong's most uh, famous avant-garde artist groups in the 60s. Echoing the efforts of the Fifth Man Group in uh, Taiwan to modernize Chinese art, the Circle Group denied Orientalness as the other to the West. Members were engaged with various styles of art. For, exa for instance, um, uh, Ho Chi Fan was uh, experimenting with a mixture of diverse uh, media and the painting materials, and his work was characterized by their abstract style, especially the use of a circle. Um, um, well, this is Ho Chi Fan, uh, circle, oops, sorry, um, uh, on silk screen prints that instilled some sense of Taoist spirituality and uh, phenomenology. And um, I cannot find Ho Chi Fan's work in the CP show, but I do find Van Lau's uh, kind of sculpture, but it's on the wall, uh, kind of image. Um, so Van Lau is also um, a circle group member. Um, Meanwhile, the search for exhibition opportunities in other parts of Asia can also be seen as a uh, process of searching for a third space. Given uh, the few available art galleries and official art in institutions in Hong Kong, before the opening of Hong Kong City Hall Art Gallery in 1962, the Salon, um, some organizations, these groups of young uh, Hong Kong artists organized could only be held in the city's cathedrals. The formation of a uh, circle group thus reflected the situation when culture and art development as well as art education relied heavily on self-initiatives of individuals and collectives. As a result, the touring exhibition opportunities like the CP show were crucial for Hong Kong artists to display their works elsewhere. Probably not coincidentally, the circle group members were often involved in Asian art scene around the time of the CP ex uh, exhibition tours. Vusis Wang, Gilbert Pan, and Zhang Yi presented their works in the first international exhibition of fine arts in Saigon in 1962. Hong Kong uh, um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and um, well, uh, and also uh, uh, Hong Kong Pavilion uh, held in. Uh, um, Osaka in, in 1970, uh, Osaka Expo, uh, and also second uh, India Triennial of Contemporary World Art in New Delhi in 1970. So the flow of Hong Kong artists and uh, their works in the 60s and also in the uh, early 70s showed that Asia-wide Asia overseas exhibitions were important for them to gain more exposure to the international art scene, as well as to a wider range of potential buyers as it was even more difficult to, to exhibit in the West. Okay, so <laughs> the last part of this article will focus on uh, reports on the airline's art show um, from one particular source of representation, that is um, Oriental travel. Um, it is a monthly public news magazine published by CP, the airline, since October 1963. 
from its May issue to its November issue, uh, Oriental Tra I abbreviated to OT, <laughs> uh, provided uh, brief information on the itinerary site of the show in each of the cities and the people who participated in the show and other uh, tidbits about the show. Um, On-site images of the show were also published alongside the short news text. All reports on the show are accompanied by images of CP's air hostesses, whose presence is actually <laughs> overshadow even the art and the artists. Each report begins with, um, oh well, there are a lot more. Um, each report begins with a, ver a very brief introduction of the painting and the artist, and in many cases, the artwork then show in situations where they're being appreciated or looked at and admi admired by the air hostesses who sometimes stand in front of them or doing other things <laughs> with um, these artworks. So the art hostesses were also responsible for handing the prizes to the local winners, uh, guiding visitors and also accompanying the important guests on their tour through the show. By contrast, the participating artists only appear twice in a photo and the artworks are barely visible. In contrast to the artists who received only cursory coverage in OT, the names of the, and the nationalities of air hostess are meticulously documented. And in the cases of Bangkok, uh, Tokyo, Jessiton, Manila, CP even flew their air hostess to their home country for them to participate in the shows. Well, like film icons, air hostess were used at that time to advertise the lifestyle of modern women. The most relevant and uh, obvious point of re re uh, reference between air hostess and the film stars can be found in the film Air Hostess, um, shot in 1959, a costly production launched by Singapore and Hong Kong-based entertainment giant Cathay organization. Uh, same name, but not really uh, related. Um, air hostess lingers between borders of documentary uh, and also, uh, you know, feature a romance film, uh, um, other genres. The film posters, uh, for example, uh, whether I can show you the poster. Well, it's not so, yeah, but you can um, see it maybe uh, roughly. Um, the, the film poster features tag li lines such as a glimpsing into the air hostess life uh, and the beautiful landscapes in Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, and Thailand, all included, as well as the paintings of, of um, you know, uh, various film locations, including Hong Kong, Taipei, Bangkok, and Singapore, to promote the film's appeal. Surprising, unsurprisingly, the distribution uh, network of Cathy's uh, studio also overlapped with, the, with part of the flight destinations of CP and also the art exhibitions. If such film representation of uh, our hostess target the uh, uh, Asian audience at that time, then s the selling point of Asian airlines to its other customers, especially those from the West, was the fantasies of the Orient. I'm sorry, I, I can show some of the, um, yeah, just maybe one screenshots from the film. A classical example of or Orientalism in the making of Asian female, uh, female flight attendants was their uh, um, was, their, uh, w was their uniform, actually. And one of the best example might be, um, you know, the kimono star uniform used by two national airlines in Asia Pacific region, namely the Japan Airlines and, uh, and Qantas in uh, Australia. By contrast, um, CP's strategy in its uniform was aim, uh, aimed at a cosmopolitan Asian or rather than a national image. So the reports on the art show, if uh, we go back, um, if you can see, uh, for example, on the, um, these images. Um, the reports on the art show from the OT identified two types of uniforms worn by the CP artists, uh, hostesses. In all exhibition views, these air hostess worn a, a white short-sleeved jacket with Chinese Changshan style and a Western-style pencil skirt, um, often in red. The jacket was made with a mandarin stand collar, either with a front or a side opening with button knots, and was made to fit the waistline. Uh, waist 
And so these hostas all wore uh, pillboxes, hats, also in red with a simple design and a Catholic beige on the um, left side of the brim. These hostesses were also seen wearing white gloves and exhibition sides. This relatively standardized uh, look, um, if we forward, uh, they're actually wearing these, of air hostess made it difficult to discern where they come from and created a unified image of women from diverse origins. However, um, other reports um, from the um, OT um, show uh, uh, air hostess dressed up in their own national costumes. So the images of um, ho uh, um, air hostesses in and um, um, and 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 in a, uh, in an uh, art exhibition also shows how the female presence can speak for Asian modernity in a way. And in the, in the case of Hong Kong, uh, represents an image of cosmopolitan Orient in the 60s. This cosmopolitanism was particularly interesting for CP's uses, as it did not, as in the usual case, represent a national identity. It's not um, all the time like Chinese or Japanese, no, because Hong Kong doesn't really have that, so it rather has a multi or in inter Asia kind of identity. Um, so this cosmopolitanism was particularly interesting for CP use, use, CP's uses, as it did not, uh, um, uh, as I said, um, represent a, a national uh, identity, but rather a constantly border-crossing, city-oriented, and multicultural experience, not restricted by national boundaries. So the female bodies of the CP flight attendants belong not only to um, the imagination of Hong Kong, but also that of Asia as a whole. So this orient was therefore also multi-ethnic and inward looking, whereas the, its orientalism strategy not only spoke to the West, but also promoted a type of inter-Asia exoticization. So a third space, again, uh, beyond the gates of both um, East and West, also manifested um, an identity that was neither inside or outside of the binary of the West and the East. Um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> what I <laughs> would like to share with you. Thank you.